What's up YouTube? It's your man Cleveland Terry and today, well today I'm actually heading out to do a wedding and I'm actually a little pressed for time but while I was loading up I started thinking about things that I feel that could help you guys in your future events. So before you take one foot into a wedding, a bar mitzvah, a corporate event, here are some things that I think are going to help you have a successful event. Roll those credits. <laughs> So right off the bat, before you load any equipment into your van, your truck, you need to check one thing. And that is check your contract, check your verbiage for what you said that you would be providing for their event. If you said I'm gonna be providing four speakers, a sub, some dance lighting, some up lights, and a gobo, and then when you get there, you only have two speakers, and a sub and no gobo, well, you are actually in breach of contract. You need to make sure that you provide everything that you say you're gonna provide. I know it sounds silly, but if you said in your contract that you're gonna be providing four speakers and you go out and buy top of the line, amazing speakers, and you know that you only need two to provide the same amount of sound that the four did. Well, technically speaking, you are in breach of contract because you stated that in your contract that you were going to bring four speakers, but you're only bringing two. What I like to do is have a little bit of a gray area. I will say I am providing a sound system. I don't specify exactly what's in the sound system because things change. If I'm bringing certain lighting, I will say this particular lighting or comparable lighting, which means that if I, for some reason, don't have that lighting, but I can provide the same type of lighting, but in a different form, well, I'm not liable. I'm actually providing what I said. Another thing I will say is I will provide this thing space allowing. So that means that if I walk into the venue and there's no room for me to provide any of the stuff I said I would, well, I am, I'm held harmless on the contract. You want to make sure that everything on the contract is what you are bringing and, or make sure that you have some sort of a clause in there that precludes you from bringing it if certain things happen. Okay. So that's one. Two, I'm not gonna count. <laughs> Another thing, you drive to the venue and you're ready to unload and get everything set up. Don't take out a single piece of equipment until you check the venue out. And I don't mean, oh, well, I know the venue, so it's no big deal. I mean, actually walk into where the party is going to be held, where the reception is, and make sure that the party planner or the furniture people haven't put you in a situation where you can't actually use half the equipment you, you brought in. Or you walk in and you find out that the client has brought in an additional AV guy and he's already provided you with speakers all over the place so you don't need to bring yours in. It's kind of silly to have to unload all of your equipment, drag all of your equipment up to the reception, and then you get there and you realize, I didn't need to bring any of this stuff. So you're a little annoyed already because you didn't need to bring the speakers to begin with, but Imagine if you had to drag them all the way up to the venue and now you gotta drag them back before the event starts. Another thing, and this actually happens before you get to the venue, allow for a certain amount of time to get to the venue. Usually my arrival time is about two hours before the start of cocktail hour. Not two hours and then I get into my car and I drive to the venue, but I'm driving to the venue to get there two hours before the cocktail hour. Now in doing that, you are protecting yourself. You're protecting yourself from unforeseen traffic. You're protecting yourself from forgetting some equipment and now you gotta turn around and drive back or you gotta go to Radio Shack or Best Buy. I just said Radio Shack. Radio Shack doesn't even exist anymore. Best Buy or any of the electronic stores, Sam Ash, Guitar Center. You might have to go out of there because you realize that something broke or that you lost something. Well, you gotta allow time for that. If you only allow yourself time to get there and set up, if something happens, you're gonna kind of be screwed. So always give yourself enough time. Obviously, you know how long it takes for you to set up. In my case, depending on the system, it takes anywhere from 15 minutes to 35, 40 minutes. But I'm not taking into account uh, the amount of time it takes to get there. Once you get there, the amount of time it takes to unload your equipment and bring it up to the venue, a lot of these venues, especially hotels, make you load in through the loading dock. And sometimes those loading docks are 
like half a mile from the actual reception hall. You gotta go up two elevators. You gotta go down 400 yards of hotel hallways to get there. You gotta go through all of the, the waiting staff and all that stuff. It can take a long time. So you need to make sure that you prepare and allow yourself that time just in case. So you got everything set up and now you are ready to go. But you are not ready to go just yet because you're not ready to go until you do a proper sound check. Sound checks are the most important thing before you start a party. A lot of the reasons why people say you're too loud or um, I hate this music is not because you're too loud and not because they hate this music. It's because it sounds like the proper way to make sure it doesn't sound like is to EQ your system. Every venue is different. Every venue has different acoustics that you have to prepare for. I recommend that you choose one song, one song and one song that you use at every single sound check. Okay. And the reason why you do that is because you know that song. So when you get to a venue and you need to EQ to it, you might walk in the acoustics are bad. It's really echoey or it's a lot of cloth in the room and it's just deadening your sound. Once you can EQ something you're familiar with, if you keep changing the song every single week, you're never going to be truly comfortable enough to do a proper EQ. So in my case, I actually use, um, <laughs> I use that power by Justin Bieber and Will I Am. I think um, it's engineered very, very well. It allows for a lot of different frequencies so I can EQ properly. I'm not telling you what song to use. Actually, another really, really good song is Toxic by Britney Spears. That engineering is some pretty amazing stuff, but you can use anything you want. You can go back to old school and play some 90s, 70s, you know, old school jams. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's the same song every time. So while you are EQing, you need to EQ and then walk to the dance floor, walk to the middle of the dance floor and stand there and do some critical listening, making sure that the sounds you're hearing are represented well on the dance floor, because it might sound really good by the DJ booth, but as you walk out, you realize, oh my God, oh, the, the, the highs are really, really tinny and oh, it sounds screeching and oh, there's really no low end. Well, that's where your EQing skills come from. Got to be able to engineer your music. Walk around the dance floor, hit all four corners. Walk around the actual venue. Check sound in the side of the room and the other side of the room and in the back of the room to make sure not only can they hear it, but is it clear, is it full? Because when you're doing speeches, when you're doing grand entrance, all those things, people need to be able to hear you speak on the microphone. Oh, wait. <laughs> also, once you get to the venue, find the client, find the party planner, let them know you're there. That's all. Just let them know you're there. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a venue and the client was either downstairs or in the room or the party planner was doing something else. And I've been there for 20 minutes setting up. I'm getting a phone call from the party planner saying, where are you? We expected you here a half hour ago. And I'm like, I'm here because they don't necessarily think outside of the box. They think that their little box is their little box and you have to go into their box. It's just the way party planners are. And I can have a whole different video on that another time, but just make sure they know you're there, makes them comfortable. So they're no longer worried about, oh my God, is the DJ not going to show up? Because that is a thing. DJ is not showing up to events is a thing. We've never done it, but I can't tell you how many times people are like, you are going to show up, right? So if I sign this contract, you're going to be there. How do I, what's my guarantee you're actually going to be there? Cause you signed a contract but it doesn't click because people, DJs, DJs flake. They do. They give us a bad name. Not you, you guys are out here trying to learn, but they give us a bad name. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, um, check your schedule, check your schedule with the, with the event caterer, check your schedule with the party planner. Make sure that everything that you guys discussed or that you're, that you think is going to happen is actually going to happen because maybe they decided that the opening dance set, they had to extend it and now it used to be 30 minutes and now it's an hour. Not that you can't do it, but it's good to be prepared that you're gonna have to be DJing for an hour versus the 30 minutes you expected. Um, make sure that the grand entrance is still happening. The song that, that they're coming into is still the same song. Little things like this. And these are the kinds of things that will make you seem really, really polished, but 
also, you'll just be more prepared. So if you can just follow these tips, I don't know how many tips I said, when I go back and edit, I'll count them, four or five tips. If you can follow these tips, they can really, really make you a much better DJ professional. Thank you for checking out my videos. I know there are a lot of videos on YouTube, but you choose to look at mine and I appreciate it. And if you thought what I gave you today was helpful, just give me a like. If you really like what I'm saying, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can be notified of the content that I post weekly. I try to do at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. And um, it's really a pleasure doing this. So guys, always a pleasure. If I don't talk to you later, we'll talk soon. Peace.